Well, good morning, everyone. Um, John Anton, Maureen Gallagher, and Colleen Endris are here in the office, um, and we're excited to do this webinar this morning to um, prepare everyone for our very first Advocacy Day, which is next Tuesday, May 27th, and at the State House. We have a very exciting lineup um, and some exciting speakers who will be attending the day. Um, and we are excited to uh, have you here with us this morning. So um, this is our first time using this webinar system, um, the, the three of us presenting today. Um, so hopefully we get everything right. But um, we wanted to let you know if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please use the chat pane. Um, and we will see those questions and, and can answer them at some point, either during the webinar or at the end. Um, and we are recording this webinar right now so that anyone who wasn't able to join us at 11 o'clock today can listen to it um, later this week to prepare for next Tuesday. So um, without further ado, we'll just get started. All right. Okay, so today's webinar, uh, we're going to go over the goals of our Advocacy Day, what the schedule will entail, um, and we have some exciting updates about who will be attending, uh, how to contact your legislators and schedule meetings, some basic meeting tips and reminders, uh, how to make those meetings personal, what our legislative agenda will be, what we'll be advocating for that day, um, the layout or recipe for an effective meeting, um, and then we'll show some links to maps and directions uh, to help everyone know where they're going that day. Goals for the MDSC Down Syndrome Advocacy Day. So legislators at Down Syndrome community are strong and committed in ensuring that all people with Down Syndrome have opportunities to lead meaningful and fulfilling lives in the community, educate elected officials about policies, affecting people with Down syndrome and their families, and develop relationships with their legislators, the key to legislative success. Okay, so our schedule for next Tuesday, May 27th, um, registration will begin at 10.30 in the morning. Um, so if you can get there right around 10.30, that'd be great. You can get checked in. We'll have folders for you when you come to registration. Um, that you will then be giving out during your legislator meetings. Um, and then from 11 to 12.30, we're going to have a reception and luncheon in the Great Hall, which is actually um, the hall that has all the flags in it. So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's called the Great Hall, John, but for some reason that's the room with all the flags. Yeah. And then um, we'll disband at about 12.30, uh, and that next hour we're hoping that everyone can have meetings with their legislators. Maureen, did you want to give people just a couple updates about who um, will be attending during the luncheon? Sure. So uh, we have some wonderful speakers. Uh, John Anton will be there um, giving a wonderful welcome. And then we have uh, Senate President Teresa, Therese Murray has accepted our invitation to speak. Uh, speaker um, DeLeo has uh, accepted our invitation to speak. Marty Walsh cannot attend but one of his major staff members will be attending, and he was the lead sponsor for our National Background Check Bill, so we're really happy that uh, he'll have a presence there. Uh, Commissioner Elin Howe will be speaking, and then we have some advocates, uh, parent advocates, Paul Willenbrock and um, John Nadworthy. We're going to ask to say a few words. They're both parents. And then we have three wonderful self-advocates who actually work at the State House uh, who will be joining us. Um, for the program, John Anton, Melissa Riley, and Brian Heffernan. So we have a nice lineup of speakers that will really, you know, talk about the importance of disability policy, the importance of the National Background Check Bill, and why it's just so important that we get it passed. And then our Legislative Affairs Consultant, Jane Lane, will give some general instructions about how, you know, how to approach uh, your meetings with your individual legislators. And we have an MC for the day as well, right? Oh, yes, yes. We just uh, actually found out that Fox 25 is sending one of their weekend news anchors, Heather Hedges, um, to be our MC for the day, which we're really excited that she can be there to, to uh, 
for the festivities. Great. Okay, so um, prior to getting involved with MDSC advocacy efforts, I didn't know a lot about my legislators or who they were. Um, and so, you know, if you already know who your legislators are, that's excellent. If you don't, there's a very handy link at the top of this next slide um, that will take you to a website. And I just took a screenshot of the website. So 48 Central Street in Somerville, that's where I live. My um, legislators are Denise Provost and Patricia Jalen. And so that, when you enter in your address, your um, representative and senator will appear. And then you will get to a page when you click on their name that has their contact information. So right here, I created this yellow box that won't actually be there. But um, they'll have where their room office is located, their phone number, and their email. Um, and so what you can do is give them a call um, as soon as possible and um, say that I'm participating in the MDSC Down Syndrome Advocacy Day on May 27th and would like to drop by between about 12.30 and 1.30 to talk to you about our policy priorities and to leave you with some important information. So you'll likely talk to a staff member um, of your legislator and they can coordinate with you um, depending on the availability of the legislator. You may or may not meet with your actual legislator. You might meet with a member of their staff person, but that's just as important because they relay all of the information back to the legislator. and They're really the, the key voices that carry the, the um, message from the public to the legislator. And just one thing, if for some reason um, you can't pin them down for an actual time, it will be absolutely fine for you to drop, just drop by impromptu to their office that day. So we're encouraging people to have meetings because that way they'll be prepared. You may well get to meet with the legislator. Um, and uh, that will be great. But showing up um, unannounced uh, is also acceptable on an advocacy day um, so that you can actually go to the office, introduce yourself, say why you're there and leave them with the information. So hopefully you'll have meetings, but if you don't, uh, please still do stop by their office. Meeting with your legislators, your state senator or state representative are busy. Some important things to keep in mind so that you hope to meet directly with your legislator, you may end up meeting with one of their staff members. And also be on time. Be prepared and practice what you are going to say and keep your meeting short, about 15 to 20 minutes, and focus on the, on the priorities. Just a couple other reminders. Um, so if you're asked a question during the meeting that you don't know the answer to, that's absolutely absolutely okay. Um, and you can offer to follow up with the appropriate information. So just take note of what the question was that you're unsure of. And then um, contact Maureen um, and the MBSC afterwards and we can get the appropriate information relayed back to them. Um, make the meeting personal. So it's really important. Legislators are meeting with you because you're one of their constituents you live in their district. Um, they want to know about you and why this legislative legislation that you're advocating for um, are important to you. So uh, we'll be going over a one-page bio that we find helpful for family members to bring to just really let their legislator know um, what's important to them. Uh, and we're hoping that with these meetings, it's hopefully the first step towards a long, positive relationship with your legislator. So it's always important to be polite and respectful, but I'm sure everyone knows that. Um, and then you'll bring along the materials that we'll give you at the uh, registration table. So you'll have um, the key asks that we're asking our legislators to support and what those um, priorities entail. Meeting with you legislators. Last but not least, get a photo. Remember to bring your camera. Have a member of your legislator staff take your photo with your legislator. The social media, tag the MDSC to your legislator at hash mark, pass the bill. Yep, so um, 
it's, legislators always love getting their photo taken, and um, whenever possible, if you can share that on Facebook, um, you can tag the MDSC Facebook page. We'll be sharing those throughout the day and afterwards. Um, you can also tag your legislator if they're on Facebook, which they probably are. Um, and we're going to use the, the hashtag pass the NBC bill because the national background check bill, or NBC bill as we're shortening it, um, is our main priority that day. So um, if we can get that trending on social networks, that'd be great. So we mentioned um, the one-page bio. Um, legislators really want to hear from you uh, what's important to you. So we're asking everyone, um, if you have time, to create a one-page bio to leave with your state senator and state representative. Uh, you can, you know, put that in the packet that you leave with them um, and go over it with them during the meeting. But if you don't have a chance to meet with them directly or you meet with a member of their staff, um, it's great that they get that personal message from you. So um, you can include a photo and your contact information, a few sentences about yourself, um, whether you're still in school or working, what hobbies you enjoy. Um, how the National Background Check impacts you. This is our main legislative, um, our, our top legislative priority that day. So it's going to be really important for you to relay why the National Background Check Bill is important to you and your family and your loved ones. And then the ask. So ask for their help to pass the bill. We have a couple of examples. Um, Kate Bartlett came to Washington, D.C. with Maureen and John and I and a some other constituents at the end of February to advocate um, in Congress during the uh, National Down Syndrome Society's Buddy Walk on Washington. So um, she just tweaked her one-page bio a little bit to suit um, our advocacy day here in Massachusetts. Um, but as you can see, she included a photo, some, some of her accomplishments so far to really just give her legislator um, a picture of who she is. And then a clear ask. So um, she's asking them to support the National Background Check Bill and also the MDSC line item. And we'll get into those details further. Um, Arthur McLaughlin is a grandfather of an individual with Down syndrome. And he created a one-page bio asking um, directly Senator William Brownsberger for his support. So if you are able to. Um, personalize the letters directly to your legislator, that would be even more impressive to them. And again, if you can leave your contact information, because um, often the staff will call you back and let you know what the legislator um, did, whether they supported the bill or if they had any questions regarding that. Even ask on the legislative agenda, the three asks are ask one is pass the national background check bill. Ask number two is to support the Mass Down General Congress funding. And on line item five nine one 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 zero zero three. Um, ask three support funding for programs that impact the Mass Down Central Congress members. The ICE program, DDS services, including the Pilot Employment Initiative. So ask number one, as Colleen mentioned, is our priority bill. And we're really excited that we've really gained a lot of momentum for the National Background Bill this past year. We've been working really hard with a number of advocacy partners uh, to redraft the legislation um, to mirror the education bill that was just passed last year, which requires national background checks for educators and others who work with school-age children. Um, it's surprising in this day and age that um, Massachusetts still does not have a national background check bill to require national checks in addition to state quarry checks. So right now, Massachusetts is considered a red flag. In other words, predators from around New England or anywhere in the U.S. can come to Massachusetts, get a job, and if they have no state criminal background, um, they won't necessarily be found. And they could have a, a very strong criminal history um, of abuse or violence in another state. And, and we could put them in a job working with our most vulnerable citizens without even knowing it. 
So this is why the MVSD has made this um, such an important priority. So it will be your number one ask, and you're asking them to vote this bill, which is H1674, um, out of the uh, roof committee. So there's a, a pathway that each uh, piece of legislation goes, and the first uh, thing that we have to do is get it through the House side of the legislature. And we just got great news the end of last week that it's left the Judiciary Committee and it's now um, in, in going into the Rules Committee. So um, we are going to be asking um, people to have the law voted out of the Rules Committee. So as you can see um, in the very uh, last uh, slide that uh, we have a very specific ask. So the first two slides around this bill talk about it just to give you some background so you can be passionate about the ask and understand why it's so important. But the la this last slide that you have up in front of you now explicitly says what the ask is. And again, you'll have a handout in your packet to give to your legislator um, that has this ask on it. And John, do you want to read what that ask is in bold print? We ask the Rules Committee favorably vote out in act required a national background check, the House Bill 1674. So your legislator has influence on these various committees that make these decisions. And ultimately on the, uh, you, you have two sides. You're going to be talking to two people. You're going to be talking to your um, senator, and you're also going to be talking to your representative. So both of them uh, have influence on the Rules Committee, and the people on the House will be hopefully influencing Speaker DeLeo, who will actually be in attendance that day, and the Senators will hopefully be able to encourage uh, the Senate President, Therese Murray, um, to vote the bill out. So just be cognizant when you're meeting with either your Senator or your representative who you're uh, meeting with, um, and so that you know um, again, how to appropriately make the ask. Um, and, and you can see in the details here that over 60 legislators signed on as co-sponsors, so that's an important point that you can bring up during your meeting. You can mention that the lead sponsor is the current mayor of Boston, Marty Walsh, which I think is impressive, and that he's been a champion for that bill now for seven or eight years. He's been working with us. Um, now he's gone, so we don't have him at the State House, but I know this is still important to him. And the other important fact, which they will be interested in, is that we have the full support of the Executive Office of Health and Human Services in the Executive Department of Public Safety and Security. So the bill has been fully vetted um, through these two very important state agencies that will be part of the implementation of the bill uh, once it get, gets enacted. So that's all about our priority ask, um, the National Background Check Bill. And now we have a second ask, ask number two. So uh, when we passed the prenatal legislation in 2012, um, the legislature was very generous to, for the very first time, appropriate some money, $100,000, to the MDSC to help implement that legislation. And so this $100,000 it's critical to the MDSC. It helps support our Parent First Call program, our Advocates in Motion program, our educational conferences, and many other things. And uh, we would really um, like the legislature to, for the third year in a row, appropriate this funding for the MDSC. So um, there's, again, um, some very specific, uh, a very specific ask for um, this particular line item. And I'll have uh, John read it to you um, because you need to include the number of the line item because, as you can imagine, the state budget is vast and has hundreds of line items, and it will be important for them to hear exactly which line item we're advocating for. Please support the funding for the Mass General Congress in line item 5911 to provide further 
or no less than the amount appropriated in the line item 59111003 in Chapter 139 in, of the Acts of 2012 shall be extended for the Massachusetts Down Syndrome Congress, Inc. And in this uh, particular case, uh, depending on who you're meeting with, either your representative or your senator, there are a couple of different bullet points. If you're meeting with your representative, you want to thank them for including the line item in the FY House budget. So the House has already completed their budget and approved their budget, and they did include it, which we're extremely thankful for. So you're just basically going to thank them and let them know that this is very, very important to you. Because it hasn't been totally passed yet, so it's passed on the House, and it then has to go to be passed on the Senate side, then the governor has to sign it, and we won't know probably to the end of June or July. So it's still important for your representative, even though it passed in the House, to let them know that this is important to you so that they'll continue to advocate for it. If you're meeting with your senator, um, it has not been included in the Senate budget, so that's a concern. So it's really important when you're meeting with your senator to let them know that this is important and that we want them to support it when there's a final vote. Um, in the budget, we want them to support it. So that would be really helpful. And then finally, um, there's a lot of other um, really uh, important things going on that are also critical for our community. And so our ask number three is going to be a compilation of a number of other line items that are um, important that we'd like to see funded. Uh, so, John, can you read um, what the ask is? Number three is going to be. We receive a list of other line items that are very important for people with Down syndrome and their families in our packet of information. So, you don't need to actually during your meeting. These meetings need to be brief and to the point. So, you're only going to verbally ask for two things. You're going to ask for the national background check bill. You're going to ask for the line item in the state budget for the MBSC. And then the third ask, so to speak, is going to be, please review this list of line items in the packet that are also really important to us. Um, and we'll have so we'll have three, three different um, asks that will be well spelled out. Um, and you just need to um, you know, hand them uh, that information that will list all those different line items that are so important to us. OK. so. <clears throat> Um, it's sort of helpful to have a general idea of the layout for a meeting since you do have limited time um, and your legislators are very busy. Um, so we just kind of lined out six steps uh, to incorporate into your meeting, the first of which is an introduction. So open the meeting by introducing yourself and that you're taking part in the MDSC Down Syndrome Advocacy Day. Um, that the MDSC is the statewide organization for Down syndrome information networking and support, um, and perhaps how you've been a part of the MDSC or how it impacts you. Um, that can also be folded into sharing your story. So this is when you could pull out your one-page bio um, to show your legislator your loved one with Down syndrome, a picture of them, um, and to share uh, what your background is and, and why you're coming today to meet with them. Um, and then the three asks. So as Maureen said, you'll really be making two clear asks. And then the third will be to instruct them to check the packet for um, a list of other bills that are very important to families within the MDSC. Um, and then you'll leave them with the fact sheets, uh, that folder that will provide you at check-in. Check if you have a camera or a phone that takes a photo and are able to take a photo with your legislator, that's great. And again, um, you can send it to us to put up on Facebook. You can put it up yourself. Um, but we'd like to share those throughout the day. And last but not least, thank them for their time. Um, and hopefully this will be the first of many future meetings. And just one I think I wanted to mention is, although this is our very first Down Syndrome Awareness Advocacy Day, there will be people there with, who have uh, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities in their families that is not necessarily Down Syndrome, 
that will be equally as excited about the day and will participate in the day, and some of you may be on the call. So obviously when you're sharing your story, you know, you're going to share the story, not necessarily about your loved one with Down syndrome, but um, your story of why you think it's so important that people with intellectual and developmental disabilities have this important safeguard. So um, we have some tremendous adv advocacy partners who have been very supportive, the ARC of Mass, uh, the Disability Law Center, uh, Mass Advocates Standing Strong, uh, the Mass Developmental Disabilities Council, uh, the Disabled Persons Protection Commission, and all of them have been working with the MDFC on the National Background Check Bill, and many of them uh, will be there and be, will be supportive, uh, which we really appreciate. Okay. Um, I just realized that I pointed the arrow at the wrong room. So we'll be in the Great Hall for this event, so I have to change this slide. Um, but we will have people stationed um, throughout the State House and that second floor area to direct you to where we will be meeting. Um, so the registration tables should be fairly visible, um, and we'll have people directing you to where the check-in takes place and then instructions for how to find us in the Great Hall, which is where our luncheon and reception will be. And one other um, quick comment is that we are still trying to get more people to come. So um, please get this information out to your friends and family members and neighbors. You know, everybody can advocate for people with Down syndrome, not, not just the family members. So please feel free to invite others. Uh, we just ask people to pre-register. There's no cost. But it will help us plan for the day in terms of space and setting up the room and and providing some food for the day. Okay, um, so if you've never been to the State House before, um, we wanted to provide a couple of links with helpful directions um, and information about parking or taking public transit and entrances into the State House. There are several accessible entrances. Um, and that is outlined. Um, the Arc of Mass has a great um, page of directions. This first link, if you click on it, will take you to uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts website. So they have directions on their website um, that show you how to get to the State House either by foot, by public transit, um, or by car. So that may help some of you in preparing um, to get in there. And then the second link here takes you to a PDF that the Arc of Mass put together with detailed directions and information about um, entering the building either through the accessible entrances or otherwise. Um, and it has some notes about um, how each entrance has security. So you'll have to um, put your bag through a scanner and take off, you know, watches or jackets, um, so just kind of giving everyone a heads up about what to expect. Um, and John actually let us know that if you call your representative ahead of time, sometimes they'll give you their very own parking spot that day. So it couldn't hurt to check in with them and see if you might be able to get uh, VIP parking. Um, before we wrap up, our communications director, Josh Komairov, created a press release. So um, that link is provided at the bottom of the page. And we'll email, um, email this uh, presentation out to all of you so that you can access these links. Um, and we can probably actually put it up on our website as well. Um, but the uh, press release is for families to give to local media. Um, we'd really just like to get the word out there about the Down Syndrome Advocacy Day and what our goals are um, and really show what a strong community the Down Syndrome family is within Massachusetts. Um, so thank you to Josh for doing that. And that concludes the webinar. Um, it was wonderful to have you all participate and uh, we'd like to um, open it up to questions and answers. If people have questions, we'd like to address those now. Okay, I see one here. Is it appropriate to bring my eight-year-old who has Down syndrome? Yes, absolutely. Um, we just would like them to register so that, again, we can count them. And 
uh, send me an email. We'll make sure we have a kid's meal available. Great. Um, all right, Julie, Messina, Sarah, can you share via email what the other asks number three include? Um, so Maureen, would we be able to get out um, that handout ahead of time? To let yes, know? We, um, we should be able to do that. We won't be ready probably till Friday because a lot of these bills are actually in the process. A lot of the budget information is being debated in the Senate this week. So we don't really know what our asks will be um, kind of until later this week. So we'll do our best, but feel free to contact me directly. And I'd be happy to talk to anybody um, about the ask. But the actual printout uh, won't be finalized till you know, perhaps late Friday. Um, so that we can make sure that the ask is exactly what it needs to be, given where um, the line items are at the, in the budget at that particular time. Okay. Um, it looks like we have another question here. Are na national background checks required in the school system? If not, if this passes, is it correct to say that anyone interviewing for a job inside and outside of the school system dealing with people with intellectual disabilities will now have to undergo the national background check? Uh, basically, what this bill does is it will require a national background check for people who work for the Department of Developmental Services or their vendor agencies. So this particular bill that we're advocating for is just for uh, people who are receiving services through the Department of Developmental Services or their vendor agencies. So they could be in a residence, they could be in an employment program, um, and that kind of thing. The, um, the education bill, actually, which this is modeled after, was passed a year ago uh, and signed into law uh, in January of 2013. So school children are already protected, and the state actually just started um, conducting those national background checks on employees. So uh, we're really excited that Massachusetts finally has one law to protect school-age children, but this is a secondary law that we need um, to go a step further. Um, and Kathy, we will be sending out the webinar to everyone so that those links will be active. You'll be able to go directly to the, the links that we provided within the slides. And we'll also, uh, we have a one-page flyer on the National Background Check Bill. Can we also include that, Colleen? Yes, absolutely. Um, because that actually, for those who have more questions about the National Background Check Bill and how it will work, that one-page flyer has a lot of good notes on it that people can um, pull from. Great. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, but thank you to everyone who uh, participated in the webinar this morning um, and for everyone listening afterwards when we're providing the link. Um, we're really looking forward to our Advocacy Day next Tuesday and having a big crowd. Um, so thank you again. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.